We're wrapping up on a pretty, pretty nice heavy snowstorm that just came in all day today. And certainly a lot of things to have to consider and do and worry about when you get a lot of snow out of nowhere. But the nice thing that I found is that the cattle panel high tunnels we've worked with for the last four years do not cause us any concern. And I want to share notes about the dimensions that we work with and the way we set them up so that we don't have to deal with that. So stick around. So definitely not a light snow, somewhere around eight inches, maybe somewhere in there, but very heavy uh, layer of ice underneath and during the whole process. All the branches that are exposed have some real nice ice on them. So kind of a stressful snow for in some ways, but here you can see one of our cattle panel high tunnels. Uh, we have four of these in our little landscape here at our half acre site. And I don't have to really worry until we get over a foot or more, uh, these sorts of cattle panels do not have any issues with even heavy driven snow. You can see on the sides here, the dimension of the panel, uh, dimension of the high tunnel, and there's all that snow on the side and it doesn't really cave in at all. So let's look on the inside. You can see on the inside here, the panels are in a, just a standard arch. And the other good news about this is there's no central supporting beam. There's no complex um, carpentry involved in order to make these stronger. It's simply about making the, the bottoms of these not be too, too wide. So let me grab a tape measure and show you some specifics. When I laid out these cattle panels initially, way back when, I thought, well, I'd like to make them nice and wide. Uh, so I could have gone even wider with the feet or where the, the bases of them touch the ground. But if I had done so, they would have really lost their ability to shed snow. And the reason I set them at the width that I did, which uh, ended up being, so there's one end, you can see the bottom of the panel touches the ground over there, or a little bit lower. And I make them seven and a half feet wide-ish. Very clearly, I'm not too dialed in on being a particular carpenter or high quality builder in any way. These, these are pretty amenable to roughshod workmanship, work personship. Um, so at seven and a half feet wide, what happens is that the center of this arch is just so that for my six foot tall head, I can walk through here very comfortably without bumping my head. But more importantly, when we get a good heavy snow, this sort of geometry sheds the snow pretty aggressively. On the outside here, you can see there's snow that definitely clings to the side of it, but it really does want to dump down to the bottom. Definitely. If we had 12 inches of snow coming or more, I almost certainly would be out here with a snow shovel, taking some of the material away from the side and sending it away. I definitely wouldn't go along the panel with a snow shovel trying to remove the snow that's asking for rips. But if I can take away the material at the bottom, then it can shed more with no problems. But under a foot of snow, even with heavy winds, we've learned we don't have to get stressed out about it. As loosely made as that panel, the cattle panel high tunnel by the road is, the one in our chicken yard, which is another four panel cattle panel tunnel, it's even looser made, uh, more loosely made. You can see it, there's nothing even square in here. But again, I followed that rule of not letting the bottom of these arches get any wider than seven and a half feet. And by doing so, it does shed that snow in quite a good way. In fact, this one, I think I may have even gone a little bit closer, maybe closer to seven foot three or even seven feet wide because the snow on the outside really sheds. You can see on the west side here, there's actually some nice patches where the snow didn't accumulate at all on the side of this because of the dimensions that it has. If you're interested in more details about how we make these cattle panel high tunnels, a whole bunch of videos, I'll link some in the description that you can check out. I don't need to explain it here, but the good news is it really is straightforward and we're looking at a dollar or so a square foot finished. That includes the poly, which I'll put a link in the description below as well. Ooh, that's rock solid. <laughs> but I'm not worried about it collapsing because the dimensions are such that it sheds just well enough. Um, but anyway, check those out in the description and let us know what you think about them. Uh, if you're thinking about building any of these sorts of structures for your own space, I really recommend them. They're 
they're fast three to four hours you can build one um, they're not a big deal and at a dollar a square foot they're great and clearly they can work even in a cold climate my friends heard me talking out here and they're all coming out from the coop to see what's going on i'll turn some compost for them in a minute but for now i should probably get back to work i really <laughs> kind of was cheating i was uh shoveling the driveway and thought oh i should make a video instead but that's about the end of that time to finish shoveling the driveway thanks for watching i don't want to <laughs> at least i don't have to shovel out the high tunnels